Let me just explain a couple of these for you so that you can understand what I'm getting at. If you're an advisor, your first question in any situation is always, what is the best thing to do? You are practical, you're pragmatic, you're not at the 50,000 foot level, you're at the 10 foot level. You're the sort of person who is always out there in front of the world dealing with the problems that people encounter, and people love you for that. Because when there's problems, you're not hidden, you're out there going, all right, here's what we should do. You're opinionated, you're bossy, some of you are bossy, hey, deal with it, you are. You're invigorated by solving other people's problems. You're weird, so you're weird and bossy. But that's who you, and you've always been this way. Even at 10 years old, people would run up to you in the schoolyard and go, I can't find my homework. And you're like, aha, here's what you should do. First you should do this, then you should do this. I can't find my beret. Why are you wearing a beret? Never mind. First we'll do this, then we'll do this. That's what you were, even at 10 you were this way. We love, we follow you because you're so pragmatic and opinionated in the face of ambiguity. We love that. Connector, if you're a connector, that doesn't mean you're a networker necessarily. I mean, you may love networking, or you may think that other than the word moist, mingle is the worst word in the English language. I don't know. Connectors, though, are always thinking about who can I connect with who? What can I connect with who? What can I connect with what? You think of the world as a series of connections. It's like you've got this metaphorical shopping bag that you carry around with you, putting in new ideas and people so that when we your followers or colleagues bump into a brick wall and can't see our way forward, you're the one going, hey, well, uh, have you talked to Brian? We're like, no, I didn't know Brian existed. You're like, yeah, go talk to Brian. He's got the exact problem that you faced only two years ago. He's done it. You're that guy. We follow you because you're resourceful. You didn't even know you're that way, perhaps, but we follow you because we're always the one that you turn to for a new idea, a new person, a new way forward. If you're a creator, your first question in any situation, your first question is always, shh, what do I understand? It's all about my own understanding of how the world works. Let's cut through the clutter and understand the core concepts that can explain why things play out the way they do. You need quiet. You need time. You need time to stop and think because some of the best conversations you have are with yourself. <laughs> and you know who you are. Right now you're going, slow down, Marcus. Where did the nine come from? <laughs> why nine? Was there a tenth? What happened to it? You need time. You hate surprises. We follow you. Remember, this is all about leadership. We follow you because you help us make sense of things. You help us make sense of the world, and that sense brings us certainty. E equalizer. If you're an equalizer, your first question is not what is the best thing to do. It's what is the right thing to do. You look at the world, and you don't see a bunch of relationships. You see a bunch of commitments made and commitments met. And if somehow some commitment is not met, you don't go, sorry. You go, hey, I'll make it right. I'll make restitution. I'm late for lunch, I'll buy you lunch. I mean, it's not just, sorry, traffic was terrible. It's, I've got to make the world right. You bring the world into moral and practical order, and we follow you because you do that rarest of things. You do what you say you're going to do, and you do it again and again and again and again and again. Influencer. If you're an influencer, your first question in any situation is, how can I move you to action? How can I move you to action? Every conversation with you is a sale. You don't even know you're doing it. But every conversation, you're trying to figure out how to end the conversation so that at the end, we somehow find that our agenda is now your agenda. Somehow you've, 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 you've jujitsued us into doing exactly what you wanted us to do. We didn't even know how you did it. And some of you do it so subtly. It's not like you're all aggressive and assertive. I mean, some of you might be. But some of you just are sowing goodwill at just the right moments. And three hours later, we're like, I'm going to do something for him. I don't, oh, how did he do that? So you're always thinking about how do we keep the momentum? How do we move toward a better consequence? That's what you're bringing to every situation. You bring momentum. A pioneer. If you're a pioneer, your first question is obviously, what's new? What's next? I mean, right now, if you're a pioneer, you're probably online right now taking this assessment right now in the room, on your phone. Or maybe you're taking it in your ear. Who knows? But you're a pioneer. You think of the world as a friendly place. You go, gosh, what's around the corner? I don't know. It's probably good. It's probably great. But the only way we're going to know is if we walk around the corner and see for ourselves, come on, it'll be great. Equalizers are going, shouldn't we have a map? I think we should have a map. Pioneers are like, no, we will make a map out of the bulrushes that we'll surely find by the river in the beautiful land of milk and honey. Come on. By the way, you can have both. I'm not saying these are opposites. This isn't like a Myers-Briggs. You can have Pioneer and Equalizer as a combination. By the way, pretty darn powerful combination. Provider, if you're a provider, your first question in any situation is, are you okay? Are you okay? I mean, legitimately, I'm looking at each individual on my team and I'm wanting to know, where are you at? I mean, emotionally, are you all right? Are you feeling safe? 
as a provider, you think about making sure that people feel safe enough to share ideas, share confidences. It's an incredibly entrepreneurial strength as a leader because you create an environment in which people feel comfortable sharing some new idea, and they don't worry you're going to crush it, or sharing a confidence to not worry you're going to blather it around. People feel so safe to experiment, to try new things, to innovate. That's a provider. A couple more since we're toward the end. Here's stimulator. Stimulator. If you're a stimulator, your first thought in any situation is, how do I raise the energy? You are just acutely sensitive to the emotional trajectory of anything. A meeting like this. You're aware right now. You might not want to be on stage as a stimulator, but you're aware of the staging. You're aware of how that makes this room feel. If you even sense that the emotion in this room right now is tilted just down, you can't help it. You've sat up more strongly in your seat. Maybe you've made a note a little bit more aggressively in the hopes that the rest of the row is now feeling a little bit more emotionally jacked up. You can't help it. That's what you do. And again, some people have no idea what I'm talking about. And others of you are like, wow, how did he? So all of us, and whether you're stimulated, it's not just a meeting. It's a phone call. It's an email string. You're, you don't need an employee survey to tell you how much engagement is happening on the day. You just walk in and you sense it. Teacher, if you're a teacher leader, we follow you because your first question in any situation is how can you learn? How can you grow? How can I learn? How can I grow? Teacher leaders lead with their questions, always with their questions, because I want to see the world through your perspective, through your point of view. I want to see how you see the world. And I love the fact that everyone's messy. I mean, if I'm a leader, I don't think that there's one size fits all for anything. I follow the mantra as a teacher leader that there's one size fits one. So which one are you? Now, I play this out. You may look at that and go, I've got all of these. Or rather, shouldn't a great leader have all of these? Well, yeah, ideally. But I'm sorry to say that, that this isn't the ideal world. This is you. And, and you're unique and distinct. And, and you've probably got an angle of attack. You may have a bit of all of them. You probably understand all of them. But in terms of why we follow you as a leader, we follow you because you have a distinctive angle of attack, and it's describable, and it's recurring. You may grow and develop as a leader, but at 20, you have some patterns of thought and feeling and behavior that are recurring at 82. There's some consider You may grow as a person, but it's not because you've become a different person. It's because you've become a more intelligent version of who you've always been.